Anthony Stokes has been without a club for over three years, which means he essentially retired from professional football aged just 31. Once one of the brightest prospects in Arsenal's youth academy, where did it all go wrong for the former Republic of Ireland international? Off-field scandals of course played a huge part in his downfall, but just how good was Stokes in his prime? Born in Dublin, Anthony Stokes joined Arsenal at just 15 years old. He made his debut for the Gunners in a 2005 League Cup tie against Sunderland, but that was to be his only appearance for the North London side. Ahead of the 2006-2007 season, the Irishman joined SPL side Falkirk on loan, and this is where he really burst onto the scene. Stokes lit up the Scottish League at just 18 years old, scoring 16 goals in 18 games, even netting back-to-back hat-tricks against Dundee United and Dunfermline in the space of a week. This incredible form caught the eye of Sunderland manager Roy Keane, who then spent £2 million on the teenager in the January transfer window. Stokes finished the campaign with just two goals and 14 for Sunderland, with Keane putting part of the blame on local nightclub The Glass Spider for hampering Stokes' development, something which would become a recurring theme throughout the striker's career. Despite this, Sunderland finished top of the championship and secured promotion to the Premier League. Roy Keane would give his fellow countrymen plenty of game time in the top flight the following season, but 19-year-old Stokes would manage just one goal all season across 21 appearances. In a chance to turn things around the following year, and allow him to gain more experience and regular game time, Anthony Stokes was sent out on loan to both Sheffield United and Crystal Palace in the Championship, but he was struggling to live up to the hype from early in his career already. Stokes again netted just one goal for the season between 25 appearances for the two clubs. This meant the Irishman had scored just 6 goals in his last 63 club appearances overall. But an opportunity to return to Scotland was about to help Stokes revitalise his career. Heading into the 2009-10 season, Hibs were managed by John Hughes, the same manager who had previously brought Stokes north of the border to join Falkirk on loan where the Irishman had thrived. A £500,000 fee was a large one for the Edinburgh side, but Hughes had complete faith in Stokes. He took a huge pay cut from the £14,000 a week he was earning at Sunderland to move to Easter Road, but this was more about reviving his struggling career. John Hughes once again got the best out of Anthony Stokes, who went on to net 23 goals throughout the campaign. However, the season did not go without controversy. In September 2009, Stokes was involved in another nightclub bust-up, and upon investigating the situation, his manager said, It's bitterly disappointing. Really, it is. Especially when it's me who's put my name to him. That's the galling thing. You feel let down. You talk up what he can do, and then on Saturday morning, you wake up, and you've got a big custard pie stuck on your face. Stokes did refound his form after the incident, but still allowed off-field antics to detract from an excellent season. However, there is no doubt he was Hibbs' main man throughout the campaign, and come the following summer there was plenty of interest once again in the Irishman. In August 2010, he would make the biggest move of his career. Celtic were rebounding after a disastrous campaign under Tony Mowbray, and had appointed Neil Lennon as manager. The Lurgan man sold star winger Aidan McGeady, and used the £9.5 million fee he received to rebuild much of the squad, including Dublin Hibs money on Anthony Stokes, as the Hoops paid £1 million to bring the striker to Parkhead. The striker quickly found form in Glasgow, netting his first hat-trick early on in a 9-0 November win over Aberdeen. Stokes formed a partnership up front with English striker Gary Hooper, with their link-up play being praised by the manager throughout the campaign. Stokes finished the season with an impressive 19 goals and 35 appearances, but Celtic finished a point behind rivals Rangers at the end of the season. Despite this, Celtic seemed to be in the ascendancy again, with Lennon revitalising the club, and Stokes, without any major off-field controversies throughout the year, seemed to have successfully revitalised his career at a high level. It looked at this point like things might really push on for the talented forward, and he might just be capable of living up to his early Wonder Kid label after all. Things weren't to be that simple though. Celtic started the 2011-12 campaign very poorly. Early on in the season, Celtic found themselves 15 points behind Rangers in the table. On October 15th, 2011, the Hoops travelled to Rugby Park to take on Kilmarnock, and shockingly found themselves 3-0 down. What proceeded was possibly Anthony Stokes' finest hour for the club. He scored two goals and assisted another as Celtic completed a comeback to earn a 3-3 draw. Stokes' performance drew praise from all sections of the press, with manager Neil Lennon admitting that Stokes may well have saved his job with the performance. This result would prove a springboard for the rest of the season, as Celtic went on to overturn the 15-point deficit and seal the title. 
Stokes bettered his tally from the previous season, this time netting 21 goals in 45 appearances. Yet again, however, it was not all smooth sailing. Despite netting now 40 times across his first two seasons at the club, Stokes was not always a guaranteed regular first team starter. In key games, such as European ties and against Rangers, manager Neil Lennon preferred Greek striker Georgios Samaras. Though Stokes' goal scoring record was much better, and his partnership with Gary Hooper continued to flourish, there was a feeling that Stokes wasn't a big game player. This perception clearly bothered Stokes, who stated before the 2012 League Cup final, the gaffer changes it up quite a bit. I find it quite hard to be honest. I'm not expecting to start at all. However, Stokes did start the game and played poorly. Celtic were surprisingly trailing 1-0 to Kilmarnock, the same side Stokes had torn apart just a few months previously. And with Celtic desperately chasing an equaliser in stoppage time, Stokes created a yard of space in the box, only to throw himself to the ground instead of shooting. Though his manager backed him up after the game, referee Willie Collum booked Stokes for diving and Celtic went on to lose the cup final. Instead of kicking on again and getting back on track, things start to go off the rails somewhat for Stokes after this at Celtic. After two strong first seasons at the club, Stokes registered just seven goals in the 2012-13 campaign and was even more frequently out of the starting eleven for important games, without many real objections being raised by fans anymore. Off-field antics continued to hang over him as well. On the 8th of June 2013, Stokes attacked and headbutted a car park attendant in a Dublin nightclub breaking the man's nose and breaking two of his teeth in what was later described in court as a nasty, cowardly attack. Stokes was also reprimanded by coach Neil Lennon when he created controversy for attending the funeral of a former Real IRA member. Asked if he believed Stokes had damaged the club's reputation, the manager replied, yeah. The following season, Stokes did break the 20 goal barrier again, but questions were ultimately raised over his quality during Celtic's European campaign. The 2013 summer transfer window saw several key attackers leave the club, including Gary Hooper, and unable to sign suitable replacements, Lennon handed Stokes his big chance by starting him in all of Celtic's first four Champions League group stage games. Stokes failed to score a single goal. In fact, throughout his entire career at Celtic, Anthony Stokes managed just two goals in 26 European appearances, both coming in a 3-1 Europa League group stage win over Rennes. 2013-14 marked the end of Neil Lennon's first spell as Celtic manager. Enter Ronnie Dyla. The Norwegian manager arrived at Celtic and was immediately critical of the dietary and lifestyle habits of many of the players he inherited. Stokes was one of these players. He did not live the 24-7 athlete lifestyle Dyla wanted to see from his squad. As well as Stokes' off-field choices now coming under scrutiny from the new coach, a change of tactics meant Stokes would no longer be playing up front. Dyla played a 4-2-3-1 formation in all games, as opposed to Lennon's front two domestically, which meant Stokes was playing an unfamiliar role on the wide left of the forward line. Though Celtic won the league and League Cup, Stokes managed just 8 goals in 38 appearances, and it was clear for all to see that his time at Celtic was coming to an end. In the summer of 2015, Ronnie Dyla let Stokes know he was no longer part of his plans at the club, and the striker was put up for sale. The reality of the situation at this point, however, was that there just wasn't a lot of interest in the Irishman. Those clubs who were interested couldn't come close to matching the wage Celtic were paying him, and those with the financial strength to do so simply didn't see the value in signing him. Stokes failed to land a move and barely appeared the first few months of the season, at which point he decided to vent his anger in a series of tweets. Taken to Twitter, Stokes posted, Who gives a f about wages when you're not playing games? It's all about playing and contributing, not picking up a wage. Upon being left on the bench for a game at Inverness, Stokes sarcastically tweeted, buzzing to be brought all the way up to Inverness with the team to sit in the stands today. These outbursts led to Celtic suspending Stokes for two weeks, with Ronnie Dyla again criticising the players' lack of professionalism. So in January of 2016, a move was the best thing for everybody regardless of finances, and Stokes was handed the opportunity to return to the club he'd joined Celtic from six years previously. The Alan Stubbs managed Hibbs re signed Stokes on a loan deal to the end of the season, and it was during this spell that Anthony Stokes may well have had his finest ever performance on a football pitch. The 2016 Scottish Cup final pitted Hibernian against Rangers. During his time in Glasgow for Celtic, Stokes had never managed a goal against Rangers. However, on May 21st, 2016, Anthony Stokes finally looked like the player he was always hyped to be. He scored in just the second minute of the game to put Hibbs ahead. Equalised for the Edinburgh side when they went 2-1 down, 
and was instrumental in setting up the corner from which Hibs scored their injury time winner in a famous 3-2 victory. Hibs won their first Scottish Cup in 114 years and Stokes was deservedly given the Man of the Match award for his outstanding showing. In many ways, this day was the peak of Anthony Stokes' career. Instead of making the move to Hibs permanent that summer though, Stokes opted for a return down south, signing for Blackburn Rovers. The season was a flop, Stokes managed just four goals, and Stokes ended up agreeing to rip up his three-year contract after just one season. A year too late then, Stokes did sign on a permanent basis for Hibs in the summer of 2017, reuniting with former Celtic boss Neil Lennon. Still just 29 years old, he had a decent first half of the season, netting 11 times in 21 appearances, but Stokes' career really starts to fizzle out from here. Just six months after joining, Stokes was let go by Hibs. Leading up to his release, Stokes again was accused of off-field indiscipline in the press by Neil Lennon, and the final straw seemed to be breaching curfew on Hibs' mid-season training break in Portugal. Over the next 18 months, Stokes would have two spells in Iran and a spell in the Turkish second division. Unable to settle and constantly surrounded by more off-field issues, Stokes returned to Scotland in August 2020 for a trial with Livingston, but ultimately never signed for the club. Anthony Stokes' last game of professional football was on the 18th of February 2020 when he made a 20 minute cameo for Iranian side Persepolis in a 2-2 draw with Sharia FC. A stalking conviction involving his ex-girlfriend in Scotland which means he can no longer return to the country. Several charges of assault in Ireland, cocaine possession charges, failures to appear in court, dangerous driving offences, Fouts with managers and accusations of poor discipline from Neil Lennon, Ronnie Dyla, John Hughes and Giovanni Trapattoni. I haven't even mentioned Stokes' international career because there just isn't much to talk about. In nine appearances, he never managed a single goal for the Republic of Ireland. Throughout his career, Anthony Stokes was very often his own worst enemy. But just how good was he really then? Was he an amazing young talent with potential that he never lived up to because of a lack of professionalism and off-field issues? Or was he a decent player who had some good spells but was ultimately never really good enough to play consistently on a big stage in important games? Let me know your thoughts on the career of Anthony Stokes.